What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're over here at Shop BK Performance. We're working on the race car today. Today I'm gonna show you how to make four link adjustments depending on what side of the track you're on for no prep. Backside no prep, front side no prep. They take different settings on the four link bars. At least that's what we have done in the past and it seems to work. So if you wanna know how we set it up, I'm gonna show you now. I'm gonna show you behind the curtain. We're pulling the curtain back. I'm gonna show you exactly what we got going on. It may work, you gotta test. There's no substitute for testing. Each car is different. So you gotta get out there, you gotta test it, but you gotta know what you're looking for. Check it out guys. Comment, like, and subscribe. If y'all wanna join the channel, hit that subscribe button. We do a live chat every Wednesday night. We talk about your car in a group setting. We always have fun, man. Y'all go check it out. And if y'all wanna get entered to win our front wheel off our crash Mustang, head on over to turbojohnracing.com, buy a keychain. It's a little turbo keychain. It's actually pretty cool and get entered to win. We're, all, we're doing a limited quantity of that, 50 of those, and then we're gonna draw a winner, and then somebody's gonna get a pretty cool souvenir signed by me and all my buddies. Appreciate it, guys. All right, guys, so we're fixing to throw this thing up on the lift. It is always a lot easier to do this on the lift when you can. We were doing backside, now we were having some issues, but I'm gonna show you, look at these bar angles. That's the lower bar, and all right guys, so we're gonna show you the bar angles. There is the lower bar, and you can see it is significantly pointed uphill, and then the upper bar is pointed downhill. Now, it is a little hard to see exactly how much everything is. I'm gonna throw this thing up on the lift real fast, and that way I can show you what we're gonna do. So this was our backside set setting. So basically, on the backside, we try to treat this thing like a radial car. We try to make it separate. Now we put a lot of weight in the back. We put a lot of spring to support the weight. And that way we can make this thing try to kind of behave like a radio car. Some of the fastest no print cars in the back. When they let go to the brake button on the back side, you'll see it actually separates. When I say separate, what I mean is the gap between the wheel and the wheel well increases. So on a small tire backside, you don't have a ton of power. The surface is kind of rough usually. That's what you want to do. And when you go front side, you have to make a change. Let me show you what change we do. So this is about the ride height we want to be. It's not super, super low in the back. We don't have all the weight in like we do in the, the back of the track stuff. So it didn't end up taking some weight out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this bottom bar. We're going to move it down. And you see, it's not really in the natural location of the bottom bar. In order to get this thing so that it had enough uphill rise, at the ride height we had it, we had to move it up to that hole there, but we're gonna move it down at least one hole. And then the top one, we're actually gonna leave it alone. And the top, we're gonna leave exactly where it's at. So what we're gonna do is move the bottom bar down. That is probably an inch and a half. Uh, that is gonna take a substantial bite out of it. What that's gonna do is move the instant center further out. And so what we're gonna do is drop the percentage. So right now the instant center is really high and short, right? So instead of picking up on the nose, it's picking up more on the back. And ideally you have long travel stuff in the front and it can come up and this can come up together. But what we're gonna do when we move that bottom bar down one hole, possibly two holes, then it's gonna move it out. And so the instant center is gonna be out there. So this is gonna kind of squat. So what we'll do is we'll have squat instead of anti-squat. So now the distance from the rim to here, go to trans brake button, the distance will squat or stay about the same. I think I want to get about 100% anti-squat. We don't want it to rise. We don't want it to squat really hard. Uh, so we're gonna move it down one hole. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the calculator out here. We're gonna, we're gonna do some measurements real quick. All right guys, so this is why it's important to do math. So this is the first time I actually plotted it out. Uh, the first time I had it, I knew it didn't work because it just didn't work at all. But, so these are the numbers. This is, I use the baseline suspensions, general instant center calculator. So this is the front of the car, rear of the car. This is the lower control arm, upper control arm. Camshaft, the motor is real high. So it's 23 and a half inches high, about from the ground. 100 inch wheelbase, the fender, I just do this to keep track of the ride height in the back essentially. So uh, 24.75 inches, 
those numbers, well, they calculate, you see it right there. 116% anti-squat, 36 inches long, 9.8 too high. So that's why it wasn't really separating. It was separating some in the back for sure, but it wasn't like slamming the tire down like my old Mustang. Let me show you up under the car. Let me show you what we're going to do and how, how it's going to change it. All right, guys, so real important. So we just did the math. You can see, same thing. This is the front lower bar. This is the bar that is on the body on the lower. It was 7.75. If I move it, it's going to be an inch and three quarter down because we're going into a, a whole nother bracket. But look what it does to the instant center and the anti squat. It takes it from 116 to 55. The length is really good 51 inches and 6.64 high, but that's just not going to work. That's a little bit too low. I don't think I want to make it that low. Let's go look at some bars and see what we're going to do. So you can see, this is a pretty big drop. Normally these are just a little bit over an inch apart, they're an inch and a quarter. Now these are the big bolts as well. So, uh, you know, that's this is older stuff. New stuff, the bolt holes are only half inch, so they're a lot closer, so you got a finer adjustment. So when you look at it, so we go, huh, okay, well, what are we gonna do here? Don't forget, we don't only have adjustments here. We have adjustments back here on the body also, or on the rear end. We got body and rear end. So let's take a look real fast and see which one would work better, moving the upper bar down a hole or moving the lower bar up a hole. Let's look at it and see, and it changes the spread. The spread on these makes a difference too. That gets a little above my pay grade, but basically, uh, essentially the further these are apart, the faster and the harder it reacts because it's more leverage, right? Because if you are closer to the instant center, to the center line of the axle, then these barely move. Now the 10 soldiers, they make some awesome stuff. They make low prep brackets that you can, you can put a really short upper bar on it. Kind of treat it like a, a, a factory Mustang style, um, but we don't have those on this car. The new Mustang is going to have that. So it's going to work out a little bit better, but let's take a look real fast and see, will we better be better off moving the bottom bar up or the top bar down a hole? I would like to get just a little bit less than a hundred percent. All right, guys, well, when you look at this stuff, so 1 to 16 is where we're at now. This is where we move it, like I was saying, if you move the lower bar on the body down one hole. This is where if you move the bottom bar up one hole on the rear end, that's what I'm kind of digging so far. And then this one is if you take the upper bar and move it down one hole on the rear end, that doesn't really change a lot at all. But this one over here really kind of changes it when you, when you look at it. So... That's kind of, this is kind of what I'm looking at right here, guys. I kind of like this one. Let's see if we move it down two holes over here. Let me move this down all the way down to 15.375 and see what that does. All right, guys, so it's all about playing with numbers. So this is what it looks like if we took the upper bar and moved it down two holes on the rear end. Not really a big, big change. Now this one, this one right here is the one we're gonna do. So basically the upper control arm stays the same. The bottom one on the body stays the same, but on the rear end, we're gonna move it up two holes. Now that's as high up as I can go right here. So what that'll do is essentially make it 75% uh, anti-squat, about 45 inches long, 7.93 long. I think that is gonna be the ticket for us. Uh, it's gonna squat a little bit, which is like what I want. I, I like maybe a little bit more anti-squat than that, but we hadn't tried it on this car yet. So that's where we're gonna start it. So we're gonna start it right there and see if we can make this thing work. So we're gonna go take the bottom bar on the rear end. We're gonna move it up two holes and it will be almost flat. It will be just slightly uphill. So that's gonna, I think that's gonna work good for us. And if we can also change ride height a little bit and that messes with these numbers as well. So we'll, we'll put those numbers in and play with those a little bit later, depending on how it works. But this is where we're gonna work. So the car should squat just a tad. And now every car is different. So you see, this is this is what we got. This is where we're going. We're gonna just go up this two inches. And then I think we're gonna be in good shape there. And if we want to continue to play with it later, I mean, this is, you know, this, this brackets are just, they're too far down for the ride height of the car. Everything, that whole bracket system should have been moved up to where this bottom bar, this bottom hole here, should have been about right here. And that way we would have had the adjustment we needed. Uh, they just built this thing with the ride height being too tall 
and it wouldn't be a problem if the front end was not down so much but with the front struts there's just no way the way this thing is built i can raise the whole car so the car has got to be relatively low in the back in order to look halfway decent and in order to get kind of the rate where you want it so that's what we're going to do so let's move the bottom bar up real quick and that's what we're going to do tonight and i think that's where we're going to leave it that's where we're going to try it we are going to go testing somewhere um it looks like it may be raining this is from the old wiring job that is not my wiring job i don't know what that actually went to but it looks like it might be raining this weekend so potentially uh wednesday night this week thunder valley uh, that's when they traditionally do their test and tune so we may go try to hit their test and tune out if they're going to do some drag racing all right guys well that's going to wrap it up tonight i just wanted to show y'all what we're doing on the saturn we're trying to make this thing better it's not built exactly the way i would want it but it's a borrowed car i can't thank randy enough for letting us borrow this thing it got us out of a pinch and we're trying to make it work we're going to have fun with it front side drag racing back side we're just going to throw a bunch of weight on it we are going to we'll figure out how to get it like 150 160 percent and i squat for the next digger die throw another six or seven hundred pounds in it and then we'll see what happens all right guys comment like and subscribe so there you go four link suspension you need to test your car though that's the key thing every car is a little bit different that's the basics though somewhere between 80 and 100 percent is ideal from what i've seen on the front side no prep and on back side no prep generally you want a little bit more you want 125 to 175 percent there are some cars out there backside i promise you there are over 200 percent anti-squat comment like and subscribe go test and drag race this season is almost here it's gonna start warming up soon we got about another couple months and we're gonna be racing all the time